Mumbai has grown to be one of the most significant cities in its region. It's the biggest city in India, with a population of over 23 million as of 2023. Not only it's the economic center of India, but a major financial and trading hub between East and West. But only some know that Mumbai was initially designed to be the next London. Many believe that this ambitious project caused the downfall of the British Empire. Welcome to the fascinating story of one of the grandest projects in history. This area off the coast of India looked quite different on the map a few hundred years ago. What now is a peninsula used to be an archipelago consisting of seven islands. In the 16th century, the Portuguese Empire colonized this island group. They called the area Bombaya, which translates as a good bay. In the 17th century, when the Portuguese princess Catherine of Braganza married Charles II of England, the islands were passed to the British Empire as part of the dowry. The name Bombaya was anglicized to Bombay. In 1668, the Crown leased the islands to the British East India Company for just £10 a year. The Bombay Archipelago was strategically a very significant area for London. On their way to colonize most of India, Bombay was supposed to serve as a great port and a gateway to this subcontinent for the British Empire. To make the most of this new territory, the British rulers merged all islands into one peninsula. They blocked the points through which the sea was flowing in during the high tide. And with this land reclamation project, they managed to triple the land mass. A territory for a future great city was ready. Within a few decades, Bombay has become a tremendous economic hub and a trading link between Europe and the Indian subcontinent. But it wasn't a great city yet, at least by the standards of the crown. But things started to change when this man became the governor of Bombay in 1862. Sir Henry Bartle Frere had a very ambitious plan. He believed that Bombay had to become the most important city of the British Empire, an icon of the cutting-edge progress that Britain had to offer to the inferior countries the empire was colonizing. So he decided to build the London of the Southern Hemisphere. First, Frere came up with a list of 14 must-have public buildings that a modern city needs, such as a railway station, a hospital, and a university. He invited some of the best architects in Britain, like Thomas Roger Smith, to make his vision come true. With London Gothic style as a reference, Smith designed the new buildings with the Bombay climate in mind. The walls of the new buildings were extra thick to keep the interiors cool, and every floor would have a veranda. The result was a unique hybrid of architecture, now known as Bombay Gothic. Frere placed his most crucial institutions in a half-mile-long row, lined up along what is now the Oval Maidan. At the center of that line was a building that Frere considered one of the most crucial institutions in his vision of a great imperial city, the University of Bombay. For Sir Bartle Frere, creating a new London wasn't only about copying buildings and architecture. He saw his role in bringing up a new generation of Indians who would be educated as British. That's why he was determined to build a university equal to Oxford and Cambridge. Frere commissioned Sir Gilbert Scott, a British architect that designed multiple buildings in both Oxford and Cambridge to create the university. Scott didn't even have to visit the site. He drew the plans in his London office and sent them via ship to Bombay. The grand building of the university had another particular reference to London. At the center of the library building, there is a bell tower rising 280 feet into the air. This tower, the tallest in the city when it opened, was intended as Bombay's answer to Big Ben. Sir Bartle Frere was doing everything to make Bombay an exemplary city for the empire, ensuring every new technological invention was introduced here right after London. For example, in 1865, street gas lights were introduced exactly after they appeared in London. The same year, the Bombay-London Telegraph was established, even before the USA and Great Britain were connected. Frere was doing everything to prove that Bombay is truly the most important urban project for the British Empire. Bombay was growing more extensive. It was also the most international city in this region. More and more people of different ethnicities came from all over India to work and do business here. But the American Civil War was the most significant boost to Bombay's economy. Bombay became the biggest exporter of cotton for the USA. But one key element still needed to be added for Bombay to become the significant imperial city that Frere had in mind a big, monumental railway station. The train station was crucial because Raj era Bombay wasn't just a beautiful city for the British Empire to show off on postcards. Above all, Bombay was a transportation hub between Britain and the Indian subcontinent. So, the Great Indian Peninsula Railway Corporation hired Frederick William Stevens to design their new office and terminal. It would be the most extensive and expensive building in Bombay. In 1887, the Victoria Terminus Station was opened to the public. 
Inspired by St. Pancras Station in London, this building completed Sir Bartle Frere's vision of London in the Southern Hemisphere. By the end of the 19th century, everything in Bombay was designed so that an Englishman arriving in this city would feel at home. And although this seemed like an outstanding achievement from the British perspective, things weren't looking so bright from the Indian point of view. Despite the economic prosperity, Bombay was incredibly segregated. Many institutions remained accessible only to white people. So soon, wealthier Bombayites started building their own institutions. The iconic Taj Mahal Palace Hotel is one of the most outstanding examples of this phenomenon. According to an urban legend, local industrialist Yamsechi Tata was rejected from one of the city's most elegant hotels because of his skin color. So he decided to build his own even more luxurious hotel. Taj Mahal Palace Hotel opened in 1903 and is one of the most legendary hotels in the world. I'm planning to make a separate video about the history of this hotel, so make sure to subscribe to my channel to get notified. Things were getting more and more tense between locals and British colonizers. The British Raj achieved one thing the empire wasn't planning to. All the nationalities living and working in Bombay began to see themselves less as Gujaratis, Tamils, or Hindus, and more as citizens of India. And more and more of them were growing unhappy with how things were working in Bombay. But there was one man who was particularly unhappy with Bombay and the way it was functioning, and he was quite explicit about it. The British Empire should have taken this humble lawyer from Pandavar more seriously at the start. But little did they know that he would change the course of the history of India very soon. Mohandas Gandhi was an Anglophile at the beginning. Like many of his peers, Gandhi was fascinated by the technological progress British Empire brought to India. He studied law in Bombay but soon was outclassed by Bombay's barristers. Gandhi left to seek his fortune in the British colony of South Africa, where he was exposed to the dark side of the British colonization. By the time he returned to India in 1915, he saw Bombay more as a curse of India than a blessing, as the empire was trying to portray it. Gandhi believed industrialization and the Western development model were the wrong path for India. He claimed that India must develop by drawing on its past and its enduring village traditions of farming and artisanal production to pioneer a more humane alternative to the system the British had imposed. His movement against British colonialism was backlashed in violent oppression from the empire, proving Gandhi's point that Britain was not India's savior. Gandhi slowly became a global figure, and more politicians in London, particularly those of leftist views, began supporting outright independence for India. On August 15, 1947, India achieved independence. The era of Raj was over. And although Bombay, which soon was renamed Mumbai, never became the London of the Southern Hemisphere that Sir Bartle Frere had in mind, it has grown into something bigger. But cities never go as planned. They start living their own life, which makes them unique. For example, little did the Dutch Empire know that their small port town on the east coast of America called New Amsterdam would grow into New York, one of the most significant cities in modern history. But that's a whole different story.